Yeah, Rick, uh, actually, I mean, you, you guys kind of uh, had a pretty good game that, that just, you know, you got beat by a couple of three-pointers from Middleton. But overall, how do you feel like you're kind of uh, holding the fort down while, uh, you know, really severely shorthanded? Well, a lot of guys are stepping up into um, higher levels of responsibility and doing a good job. You know, Wes of Wundu is doing a good job as a starter. Green's giving us good minutes. You know, tonight Tyrell Terry, you know, came off and I think he was a plus in his six or eight minutes or whatever it was. Um, and uh, so, look, that's that's why you have a team. That's why you have 17 guys, you know, try to get them all ready, um, believe in them all. And, and, you know, knowing that, you know, during the course of an NBA season, there's going to be situations like this. Uh, all right, Richardson. Yeah, right, yeah. Okay, Kevin. Hey, good evening, Tim. Uh, got you, got, guys got yourselves back in it in the third quarter. You had 13 points there. In the third quarters this year, it seems like you've been able to find a rhythm in those quarters. What's it about those third quarters that you've been able to get yourself in that kind of rhythm in those quarters there? Uh, just coming out, uh, not being aggressive. You, you know, you know, once halftime is over, you kind of get the idea of how teams are playing you at that point. So uh, just try to pick and choose your spots wisely. And um, when the ball comes to you, just be confident and knock it down. And it's great that your teammates are finding you uh, once you get once you get it rolling and your numbers fall. <laughs> Hey, Tim, uh, that lineup you played with middle of the second quarter with the rookies, James and Willie, what have you thought about how the rookies have handled, uh, you know, this extra responsibility with you guys being shorthanded and especially after such a chaotic offseason and start to their careers? I mean, they did an amazing job when it came in the game. Uh, it's um, it's hard when, you know, when you're a rookie, you getting thrown into the fire, especially with the circumstances we're dealing with right now. And you're playing against arguably one of the best teams in the league by far. So um, they came in there and they gave us that spark when we were down 13, 14 in the second quarter. And, uh, and, and with that, you know, them coming in and bringing that energy, just like they do in practice um, is a little bit them not knowing what they're doing out there, but you know, they're running and, and gunning and, and, and getting their feet wet and, and, and they're knowing and finding the rhythm of the game. And it, it was beautiful to watch. So I'm very, 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 very happy that, you know, they came out there and produced for us. Wayne? Tim, how difficult is it trying to win these games with five, without five guys that probably will be getting a lot of minutes? You said what now? Sorry, I didn't hear. Sorry. How, how hard is it trying to win these games without five of these guys that was not in the lineup tonight that probably will be getting a lot of minutes? Yeah. Um, it's tough, man. Uh, like I said, you know, this COVID thing is really uh, um, messing with some of these teams, but, you know, it's next man up. Uh, we're going to hold it down for them before, until they get back. Or we're going to keep competing. And, uh, and uh, like I said, it's next man up. Okay. That's it. Thank God I go home. So Hardaway and Carlisle both with high praise for the Mavericks rookies and some of the younger guys on the end of the bench. You got you like that in a veteran leader uh, giving credit to and acknowledging what some of these guys are doing. The Mavericks did have to call on Josh Green and Tyrell Terry in a, in a precarious situation where you wouldn't ideally like to run some of, uh, some of your young guys on the road. And granted, there's no crowd there right now, but on the road uh, against the Bucks, the best team, one of the best teams. Uh, in the league, certainly one of the best in the Eastern Conference as well. So it's uh, it's really a tough situation um, to put anyone in, let alone guys with so little experience and polish. And Tyrell Terry played in just his sixth game last night. He had one career basket coming in. Still hasn't hit a three. They've both been layups. He hit one last night uh, over Giannis, or rather around Giannis. So 
very good perspective. Um, I like the leadership there. I did think it was funny as well. Hardaway had one of the shortest post-game pressers, and yet you could just tell he just was like, oh, thank God, I can go home. Like he, he did not really care to talk after a loss, which I think is also kind of a veteran move as well. Like you do what you're obligated to, and then you're like, all right, on with it. You know, let's, let's get to the next thing. So interesting perspective there. Um, obviously the health and safety protocol stuff is a big impact, but as he said, it's next man up. Can't make excuses. You just got to roll because no one's going to slap an asterisk on this season. They didn't do it last season. They're not going to do it this season. Now fans and media might, discuss that and debate that but the nba is not going to do it <laughs> they're not going to treat this like the the barry bonds home run record where they slap an asterisk on it uh it's going to be just straightforward uh this is what happened this is who won doesn't matter what the circumstances were so it is what it is next man up you just got to deal with it the mavericks they uh they were severely underhanded but you know what in the end they had a really good chance to get this one. And that's why it's a little frustrating because even though they shouldn't have had a chance between the second chance points, between getting out rebounded again, uh, all that, they still found themselves in a situation to get a win and they had several cracks at it. Now you can say part of that still came down to despite their improvements on the offensive end and really in crunch time in general, you can say, hey, that just boils down to whether or not they're able to seal the deal. And even though they made progress, even though they looked good through much of crunch time, literally the final minute 12 or whatever it was, things didn't go right. They missed opportunities. They didn't have any silly turnovers or mistakes, but they missed good looks in several of them. That's fair. That's honest. I still think this team's going to have to grow and learn a little bit in that respect. I think they're up to the challenge, but they're going to have to learn and grow into that. And part of it will just come with repetition. Part of that will come with uh, KP and Luca finding their gel together again. KP knocking the rust off, which might take time. People need to be patient and understand he's going to have some rough shooting starts early in the year. I know he looked really efficient for the most part two, game, or two days ago, whatever it was when they played against Charlotte. You can't expect that every time. It's like for most of this game, the rust that we expected against Charlotte – was here instead. He got some rhythm going, and that's good. But he's going to have to find a rhythm and continually work and fine-tune everything before he can put it together. 